today we're going to be talking about continuity. And first, before we do anything, I want you guys to look at this picture and think about which one of the two functions you think there are continuous. Now look at how we would draw A. If I were to trace over A, looking at all the function values, notice how I'm not lifting up my pencil at all. as I ride through the function. But now B, look at when I'm tracing over B, writing through the function, writing through the function, I have to lift up, my, lift up my pencil, go down there for that function value at three, then lift it back up and continue on drawing the function. So which one of the two functions are continuous? A would be our continuous function and B is what we call discontinuous. Here's the definition of continuity at a point A. And I want you guys to know this definition. This is going to be super important to us as we work through the year. So first, part A is the function value has to exist. Part B, the limit, as you approach that value, also has to exist. And then part C, the limit has to equal the function value. So going back, A is continuous because for each one of these function values, the limit also exists at that function value. But for B, how we would say that the limit doesn't exist, or the limit exists, but it's not continuous, is because the limit, as we go to three of our function, does not equal F of three using the third part of our definition. There are some certain types of discontinuities that I want you guys to memorize the names of. The first one, A, this is continuous everywhere. Now B, this has what we call a removable discontinuity because I've removed this function value at zero from our possible y values. C is also a removable discontinuity. Now D is a step function where I have some y values here and then I jump up and have some additional y values continuing on so that's what we call a, dis, a jump discontinuity. Notice in E, we have an asymptote because our function value can't be zero, so therefore that is what we call an infinite discontinuity. It has an infinite asymptote. And then the last one is a function where you oscillate up and down, up and down, and up and down. And as we, if we could zoom in, around zero here, it would keep oscillating up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. So that's why F is an oscillating discontinuity. First example, identify the points of discontinuity and state the type of discontinuity. Well, tangent, we know tangent has asymptotes. We also know tangent is sine over cosine. It has asymptotes where the cosine equals zero. What values of x make that cosine equal to zero? Well, it's going to be pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. And there's an infinite amount of those. So how we were to write that is pi over 2 plus, now what's the difference between each one of these? The difference between each one, or it's periodic, every pi. Now I realize that the period of cosine is 2 pi, but 
the asymptotes repeat or points of discontinuity repeat every pi units times k where you have to tell me k is integers now what type of discontinuity is that it's an infinite because that's where we have asymptotes Next one, identify the points of discontinuity, state the type of discontinuity. Well, remember natural log functions. The inside part here, x plus 1, has to be greater than 0. So x has to be greater than negative 1. So I guess the point of discontinuity technically would be negative 1. And because it can't be that and we'd have an asymptote there. So that is also an infinite discontinuity. I might say it is continuous for all x greater than negative 1. Just so that we're clear on where we have values of x or values of y too. Okay, now a piecewise function. Piecewise function we have to look at and see if the limit exists. So I'm going to see limit as x goes to 2 from numbers a little bit less. We would use this function 3 minus x. So that would be equal to 1. So the limit now as we go to numbers a little bit more than 2, that also equals 1. So our limit as x goes to 2 of our function equals 1. But now what is f of 2? The actual function value here is at 2. So we have a point of discontinuity at x equals 2. And the limit is 1. So both of these, both the 3 minus x and the x over 2 meet at 1, but they have an open hole for each one of those, and the function value jumps to 2. So that is what we call a removable, because I've removed that value, and just for one point, I have moved that value up to 2. Okay, a graph. And I really like these questions. Um, you see these a lot on the AP. So consider the function graphed and the limit as x goes to 1. So limit as x goes to 1, does that exist? Limit as x goes to 2, well that value is equal to 1 because they approach but never equal it at 2 here at 1. But our function value is something different, which is, oh, I'm sorry, f of 1 is up at 1. f of 2, let me jump down to e since I was going to start talking about that, is up here at 2. And then the limit as x goes to 4 from numbers a little bit less, well, that is equal to 1. Now, is the function continuous at x equals 2, y, or y not? So at 2, we are not continuous, and use the definition to justify your y. I want you guys to get in the habit of doing that. Why is that not true? Because the limit as x goes to 2 of our function does not equal our function value. Is the function continuous at 1? No, because our limit didn't exist. as x goes to 1, okay, now is the function continuous at 4? All right, at 4, 
even though the limit from the other side didn't exist, we have, but we did have a limit from one side, and the limit equals the function value, yes, because the limit as x went to 4 from numbers a little bit less of our function equaled the actual function value. So that one, even though it is a one-sided limit, that limit still existed. Example three, give a formula for the extended function that is continuous at each point. So I can manipulate this function so that it's continuous at nine. Okay, because if I were to plug in nine, I would get zero over zero. So I need to manipulate this function. If I change this function and I factor the top, and it's going to be an odd factoring that you guys may not be used to, but notice how we have the square root of x minus 3 on the bottom. If I factor this to the square root of x minus 3 and the square root of x plus 3 on the top, notice how that will foil out to what our top is. So therefore then, kind of if you're thinking about graphing this and graphing a rational function, the x minus 3's cancel. So now we're really graphing this function. So this would be an extended formula so that our function here would be continuous at x equals 9 because I can plug in 9 here and get a y value out. This original function technically has a whole at 9. Okay, number four, find a value for a so that the function is continuous. So let's talk about what we have. What we have for numbers less than one, we have some sort of parabola. I don't know what the parabola looks like. I'm just going to give a sketch of a parabola. Okay, so I have that. And then what I need is I need this line to essentially match at that point. I essentially need them to meet at that point. So what we need is we need the top function to equal the bottom function. But what x value do I need them to meet at? I need them to meet at 1, so plug in 1. I don't know what a is. I'm solving for a, so I, don't, I leave the a alone because that's my variable that I'm looking for. So I have 2 minus 4 is equal to 3a plus 7. So therefore, a is equal to negative 3. Intermediate value theorem. Please make sure you have this written in your notes. This is super important and has been showing up on the AP a lot. So I'm going to be really stressing this formula and making sure that you guys know this formula. So the intermediate value theorem for continuous functions. So the function a function f of x here. So I have a function is continuous on the closed interval from a to b. So I have a function that's continuous on every x value. So therefore, I have a y value for all of these x values from a here, from this point here, to b. Therefore, the function has to take on all of the y values from f of a to f of b. So for this value, I'm going to have, and that y value for the f of a and f of b, I have a y value corresponding to that x value. To I have some x value, I should say. I have some x value c that corresponds to a y value in between f of a and f of b. So I have, for every x value on the bottom here, I'm going to have a y value that's going to be in between those two.
use the intermediate value theorem to show that f of x has a zero on the interval. Okay, so first thing we need to do is find the actual function values. When I plug into there, I'm not going to go through that math. That math, math is algebra. I get negative 4. When I plug in f of 4, I get 18. So I need to use the intermediate value theorem to show that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some typing. So since f of x is a polynomial, f of x is continuous on our interval from 2 to 4. Because f of 2 equals, equals negative 4, and f of 4 is equal to 18, there must be a value on 2 to 4. There must be a, I'm going to say x value, where f of x equals 0 by the intermediate value theorem. Okay, a few things I want you guys to recognize. I never use the word it. Look at that. I've never used the word it. I never want to see you guys say it. It's a big no-no. Okay, when you're explaining, never use the word it. Also, what I said is I first stated that the function is continuous on the interval. And then I stated by the intermediate value theorem that because I have a negative and then I have a positive, so if you think about it, f of 2 is down here at negative 4, f of 4 is all the way up here at 18. I don't know what happens in the middle but it has to cross somewhere in there because we're a continuous function. So it's going to take on these, all of these values from negative 4 to 18. And I think I just said the word it. It's going to, it, the function is going to take on all of the values from negative 4 to 18. So therefore it has to pass, has to be 0, the function has to be zero at some point. Okay, please make sure your lesson summary is submitted on time.